So, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about your background in directing? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, I, I'm a uh, I'm a self-taught director. You know, I mean, I I didn't go to film school, uh, but I started making movies in high school as a as a as a hobby and uh, fell in love with it. And, um, you know, at college I thought I was going to either be a lawyer or go to the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't work out. But uh, and then I had this major car accident, which changed everything, and I, I decided to to do what I love and uh, chase the movie thing. And so moved to New York. It was, I was in Detroit at the time. I made some stuff in Detroit. Had some local screenings. Was selling DVDs out in the on the street, just like hustling. And then I moved to New York, and uh, that changed everything. And um, you know, met Danny Glover. I got Muslim made, and uh, you know, I. I been, I've been making stuff in between shorts and stuff like that, and then finally, um, I wrote Destin a few years back, and uh, and then, you know I kept the the grind of an indie film. It's like you keep trying to get it made until it does. Like I don't know, I don't know quitting. You know, I don't understand that. It's like if I got a movie that I believe in, uh, I'm gonna get it made, and so that was the, that was the case for this one. And it, and it was a tough journey, but we got it done. And uh, that's the short version of my story. But in between, like since I didn't go to film school, I always had this thing of like constantly trying to learn. So I'm always re I've read probably every good film book there is. I've um, I'm so you know if you, it's crazy like how much you can learn on YouTube now. It's ridiculous, right. man. Like I tell any young filmmaker, like man, go to YouTube, subscribe to these channels, like these dudes. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'd be shocked if this is free for another year, because it's just so valuable. And you know, wherever I, I lacked, you know, in cinematography or whatever, I didn't learn the technical. I learned, I know all that stuff now because mm -hmm. of these courses I take and these these books I read. So like, you don't have to go to film. Film school is great for connections, but um, but it's all available to us now. So. That's that's the short version of my journey. Cool, cool. Can you tell us more about you and acting? Because you've been acting for so long. I mean, it's it's yeah, it's kind of. <laughs> um, just how it started or how? Well, just kind of like how your your passion turned into like a career. Oh, um, okay. Um, well, I've been acting for twenty. Wow, uh, this year is like twenty four years. So it's just like a half of a lifetime, or depends how long you live. <laughs> um, I got into it doing extra work in Chicago. My mom took me to an open casting call for an Oprah Winfrey movie. Yeah, I was, I was 14. And um, I got picked out of a thousand kids to be one of like 20 extras in the movie. And I was able to say one line. And that was a month and a half, so it kind of started from there, and I was just shy. I'm still kind of shy and reserved until I started going, but, you know, I kind of fell in love with it from there, you know, seeing Oprah from afar, you know, she, she looked like the black Jesus, you know? <laughs> couldn't nobody touch her, I just saw the halo over her, that was That's Oprah funny. to me, and that was the biggest thing growing up to me in Chicago was Oprah and Michael Jordan at the time. And uh, just to be in the same vicinity, I remember seeing a guy from Menace Society. He played this dude, Sharif. He played uh, Sharif from Menace Society. Yeah. He was in a movie. Yeah. He had a bodyguard. He walked through. He got out the SUV. I was like, man, that's the guy from Menace Society. <laughs> and I tried to get his autograph. You know, he looked at me kind of like, "What's up, kid? I ain't doing nothing." <laughs> I'll never forget that. Well, shout out to Sharif. Uh, I don't know him, but it's all good. But um. So I got the passion from there and then just um, started picking my way at, you know, roles here and there in Chicago, just getting into it. And then I felt like this was something I wanted to do for the rest of my life. So God willing, I'm breaking into today. Um, I just have a passion and will to succeed in life, you know, and um, I feel like my intentions are pure. They, you know, sometimes they're too pure and honest, you know, in this world, you know, honesty can get you in trouble, as you see. But you know, that's something that I still, I'd rather get in trouble a million times over if it's for the truth, you know? So um, I'm thankful to do what I love and I feel like I'm just getting started. So, mm -hmm. and uh, Destin's a powerful film. 
that you know hopefully people will enjoy i'm not going to say that they're going to enjoy it because i want them to see it first mm -hmm. decide for themselves but um i think it'll i think it'll play really well in theaters and then when it makes its way to the world on other streaming or platforms i believe it'll it'll be a movie that you know stand the test of time and have you know a long good mm -hmm. run so yeah so uh can you tell us more about the importance of like the plot in the actual movie and why you felt the need to make it? Because I, I think people discount how much choices our choices matter and like not even just the big ones like oh I'm moved to to New York or to L A but like just the everyday choice to say I'm not gonna drink every night you know <clears throat> like I'm not gonna just the small if you drink every night and a lot, you know, you end up ruining your family. Sometimes you ruin your family, you make bad decisions, you might drive and get a DUI, you end up in jail, like, but then at some point you stop, things might turn the other way completely, right? It could, you look, like drinking every night will, will make you look different, actually. It'll take years off of you, mm -hmm. you know? A year of drinking every night versus a year of working out and eating right, you will look like five years, 10 years older. Right. And so, like, I feel like those like it's fascinating to consider, like how much a thing can happen and change your life completely like it does in the movie. And, you know, I never want to do it in a regular movie. I, I always like to have some kind of dynamic that's that makes it interesting or I'm very much into fantasy. And, like, and while this isn't much of a fantasy movie, there's a fantasy element to it. But mm -hmm. I, I definitely wanted wanted it to be interesting and try something different um, because I think as black filmmakers we're we're so used to just doing a couple of genres we do like the slapstick comedy we do like the hood movie and then we do that's true. The, the love story and that's all we do and that's they they put us in these boxes it's like dog you know they've been doing we're fairly young in this as black filmmakers we've only been in it really like for 30 or so years, they've been doing it for a hundred. So like we, the, and they do all the genres. They do Star Wars and shoot, you know, they're mm -hmm. doing it all. So I'm like, why can't we? And so that's for me, you know, I'm like, let's let's break down these boundaries and like start doing interesting stuff that's more than just the ABC story. We got a whole alphabet left to like mess with. That's true. So Corey, how did you prepare for this role differently? Well, both of them were different, but mm -hmm. they were the same you know, kind of to me, mm -hmm. because they're both a sense of real life, you know what I'm saying? They're both yeah. like a slice of real life, like the architect is, you know, its own world he lives in, but you know, it's still real. So I can relate to anything where you feel there's a sense of um, like reality, you know, because I'm sure there's, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of guys who, who can relate to, you know, going to work you know, at a, in a workplace where he can't be too, you know, vocal. Mm -hmm. He has to hold back, you know, on some things. He has to let things slide or let things go because he don't want to get, a, what's the word? Black Ostracized yeah. or blackballed. Yeah. Because, you know, he has to, you know, provide for his family or he has to keep the lights on and keep food in his stomach. So sometimes you say, I can't say that because I can be, I'm one check out away from being yeah. homeless and that's just how it is in the real world you're one or mm -hmm. two checks away from being out in the streets and um you know so that's very relatable in the architect world and then you know just just wanted to do the right thing but you know without giving the movie away you, you know he he's he's um he has to make that decision on what's right and what's best for his soul and for the people and that's what it's all about at the end of the day it's for the people so um, that's Rashid's character, and then the um, Sheed, the drug dealer's world is very relatable as far as father-son relationships, mm -hmm. you know, and the street dynamic, <clears throat> because the inner city and the streets is, is taking our youth daily outside of yeah. that and the cops and all this other shit that's going on in the world and the government. But, you know, the part that we could show there is, you know, be more involved in your kid's life. You know, I have a son, uh, myself, who's six, you know, it's very important that your fathers are in their lives because that moment of the dad being there and being that strong voice can change his life for the better. 
And you know, we want people to, you know, at least have a chance and look at the movie and say, you know what, let me, you know, do the right thing or let me get mm-hmm. involved with my son or let me mend this relationship because the children are the future. So, um, is there anything that, that you kind of want this movie to get across to, you know, young people or teenagers that are living this kind of lifestyle? This is their life, not right, versus right. a movie. Yeah, I, I think, uh, you know, I never want to tell anybody what to feel for a movie, you know. We all come from different. Everyone's life is different, so I'm completely different. And, you know, I, I can only hope that people get something more, or something valuable from it. But I can say emphatically to, to youth that the choices we make, first of all, it's never too late to make a different one. Mm-hmm. Like, a lot of people feel, and, and it's okay where, wherever you are, you know? Mm-hmm. It, like, it, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute thing where, where you can always adjust and course correct and, and make better decisions and, and contribute to in a way that, that can make this world a little better, you know, in your, in your respective area, you know, so I think that's the most important thing. Is like, yo, it's, it's not. It's fine, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> and you and you always have a choice. Um, so that's that's the main thing. Okay, what about you, Corey? Because some, you know, some people, you know, like young kids mm-hmm. and teenagers, really live this kind of lifestyle that you portrayed in the movie. What is what is it that you want them to watch this movie and walk away from, kind of thinking or feeling differently? Um, your life, you know, it's very important. It's very crucial, especially in today's time. <clears throat> and you are your decisions. You know, it's just that mm-hmm. simple. You know, uh, we're not being preachy, but there is a message in the film. Mm-hmm. That you know, you're one split second from the left to the right, from you know the um, the good or the bad with your life, and hopefully they choose good. You know, because yeah. every cause has an effect. You know, everything True. you do has consequences, good or bad. So, cool. Yeah. Okay, thank you for your time. Right. Thank you. I'm thank Adrian you. from Olderville. <laughs>